So Tati Westbrook just made a video discussing everything that went down with James Charles and this might be the final nail in the coffin and we definitely, definitely need to talk about this and see what lessons we can learn from it. up everybody this is chris from the rewired soul where we talk about the problem but focus on the solution and if you're new to my channel what i try to do is take a look at the youtube community whether it's the drama going on or just things that i see that i feel need to be discussed and i try to take this mess and turn it into a message because what good is consuming all of this drama or all of this content if we're not seeing how we can apply it to our own lives so if you're into that stuff make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. So yeah, Tati Westbrook just released her video titled Bye Sister. And the second she did that, I'm like, oh girl. And the first thing that I want to address is I, I made a video about this in the past. I discussed the situation and I still, I still stand by what I said. And Tati Westbrook agrees. Like what I said originally was like, we just live in this weird time where we we feel this need to make everything public and they're like it's just strange like because tati and james were friends right like why didn't she just like call him or message him or whatever and say yo dude i was hurt by this situation so in her video she says this so what you guys saw in that ig story that happens like that happens to so many of us like we let our emotions lead because we're creatives and you have access to this piece of technology that allows you to express, you know, so widely and so quickly. I'm a really, really big believer in hitting the pause button, thinking things through in that moment, I didn't. So here we are and I'm gonna talk about it all. And yeah, looking back in hindsight, like she, she even acknowledges that she should have handled it a different way. And she mentions later on in the video, like as she mentors other people like James Charles, she tries to talk to them and like help help them not make so, like impulsive bad decisions or to reflect on situations and learn from them. So yeah, like let's let's talk about this situation. And it definitely opened up my eyes, but you guys, like, here's the thing. Why, why am I talking about drama? Why do I talk about drama? Because here's the problem. In this whole situation, the way I see it, I imagine the millions and millions and millions of people who are gonna watch this video, watch videos on this, all sorts of stuff, and we're just sitting there just like eating the popcorn or sipping on the tea, and we're taking sides like Team James or Team Tati, right? But like, escapism is good, but how is this affecting your own life, right? Like what Tati and James is going are going through, like this is something that happens to me, it happens to you, happens to all of us. So as we look at it, we need to kind of look at it and say, okay, what can I take from this? What can I learn from this situation? All right, so Tati Westbrook, she was, um, she was kind of in, you know, motivated to make this video, especially after Gabriel Z uh, Zamora made some videos about her and everything and, Tati Westbrook kind of like explains at the beginning of this video, like obviously looking in hindsight, maybe she shouldn't have done that, that Instagram story, but now, now like, you know, the, the, the box is open, right? Like oh, this is started like, and hey, you might as well dive into it. But like some of us have been in this situation before, and this is something that I recommend, and I'm not a licensed therapist or psychologist or anything. I have a, my own background with mental health issues, codependency, I've worked in addiction treatment center, all sorts of stuff. And like, so talking about codependency, I don't necessarily think this is a bad idea. Like basically what Tati Westbrook did in this, like she was like, I am done. I am done, I'm gonna sit down and make this video and go over all of it. And she even mentions that, like she is done with this friendship, with this relationship, maybe in the future, like, like I, I don't, I don't personally believe that anybody really, like there are some very specific cases like of terrible, terrible, awful things, right? Like murder, you know, like murder, maybe don't forgive the person, but James Charles is 19. So like maybe in a year or two when he pulls his head out of his young ass and figures out what he's doing with his life, how he's just walked over people, used people, manipulated people. Maybe if he grows and learns from this, Maybe him and Tati can have a relationship again, but it's going to take like a real serious apology. It's going to take like the real showing of remorse, you know? But if you're somebody who's in somewhat of a codependent relationship or just even a toxic relationship, like I don't recommend like making a YouTube video and like going nuts on it, but 
Sometimes you gotta drop that nuclear bomb just so you can be done with it, right? Just so you can get out of that relationship. And I feel that's what Tati did in this situation. So basically, throughout this, this video, Tati explains how this wasn't just, it wasn't just that James Charles did this endorsement for Sugar Bear Hair, like that was just, that was just the straw that broke the camel's back. And she goes on through this thing. And man, man, can I empathize with Tati Westbrook in this situation. Like she talks about how their relationship wasn't transactional. All she did was give and give and give and try to help and try to support, right? And something that I often talk about is self-seeking. Like we do things for other people without expecting anything in return. And it seems like Tati was really being selfless in this situation, just giving to James, trying to promote James Charles, trying to build him up, trying to do all of this. And it sounds like she was pretty cool with it when James Charles like recognized you know, who his audience and who his demographic is and why he wasn't gonna promote Halo Beauty and all that. But it felt like such a stab in the back when he went on and did this for Sugar Bear Hair because he had already told Tati that he doesn't, he doesn't wanna promote products like that. Right? But like, just imagine, imagine, like put yourself in Tati's shoes for just a minute and imagine being there for somebody. Like this is one of the reasons why I can imagine a parent, you know, if their child did something just, just so awful to them, right? Like you've done so much for them. You know what I mean? So in Tati's situation, she wasn't giving, expecting anything in return. And a lot of us do that, but that doesn't mean it doesn't hurt. It doesn't mean that it doesn't hurt when that person turns against you. So for me, for me, not only am I father, but <laughs> my son's only 10, he hasn't gotten to the age where he's like, can really screw me over yet. But in my addiction recovery, this is something that's happened to me before, right? Because I come from a 12 step background where we're taught like, once you get this thing, once you get this sobriety thing, you help others. I have found my life's purpose through helping others, just giving freely of myself, just sharing my experience, teaching others what I have learned as a part of my own addiction recovery, a part of my own mental health recovery, a part of my own like uh, overcoming getting out of toxic relationships and my issues from childhood and trauma and all these other things. I give that freely to other people, but in addiction recovery, we, we see this happen and I have had people who I have done nothing but give to, right? Like, not only have I given to them, but they, they don't have anything to offer me in return. There's no transaction available. Like, especially when you're dealing in addiction recovery, and this isn't a knock at people who are newly sober, it's just the truth. Like, when I first got sober, I had like three pairs of clothes, no money, my life was a mess, I was a mess, right? Like, everybody who was helping me, I had nothing to give them. So when I'm helping others who just newly get sober, like, what are they gonna give me? They have nothing to give me. And that's cool, I don't need anything from them. I get joy out of not only being the opportunity to help them by sharing my experience, but I get joy from seeing that evolution. And don't get me wrong, I have worked with countless people, like at the drug addiction treatment center I was working at, I worked with thousands of people and so many of them were doing well and the brightest part of my day is when any of my old clients get a hold of me and, and just say, Chris, thank you, thank you. You know what I mean? And they thank me, but there are also those who turn on me, right? They turn on me or, and they'll, they'll talk smack about me or they'll, you know, blame me for, you know, something even though it was their own responsibility, all those things. So I absolutely get it and understand. So if you're somebody who's been through this as well, what helps me out, what helps me let go and get past it, and this is something that Tati Westbrook talks a lot about when she's talking about this situation with James Charles, she just wants to let go and move on, right? So I, I personally have to practice forgiveness, and something that I do is that I, I, try, I try to realize that this, this isn't a bad person, this is a sick person, all right? Like whether you wanna um, you know, see them as spiritually sick, or, or mentally sick, whatever it is. Like James Charles, like, hey, the dude's like not even 21. The prefrontal cortex, the logical decision-making part of your brain doesn't fully develop until your mid to late 20s. James Charles is an idiot kid, right? That's what I'm saying. Like maybe later on him and Tati can have a relationship, but, but 
what help what would help me if I was in Tati's situation to say this is a sick person, not necessarily a bad person, right? Even though his actions are bad, like I think it's important that we separate the actions from the person, right? Because if not, we can get into this whole pessimistic, nihilistic type of frame of mind where we just think everybody's awful and all sorts of stuff. So the last thing I wanna talk about is this clip right here. I'm not gonna let that happen to me. And if I fall apart because people don't like what I have to say or that I said it loud here on my channel, um, I guess that's on me and this is my choice because I've always been a person that wanted to not let fear control me. That's been an issue of mine in the past. And I want for anybody out there that is letting fear and power and someone else telling you how to feel because there will be a consequence, don't let that fear eat you up. You are free to be who you want to be. You're free to speak up if something's not feeling okay. And if you ever need to defend your character, go for it. And I hope at minimum, I'm an example of that. And that, that Tati Westbrook is how you end this on a high note, right? Like Tati Westbrook was talking about the fear she had about making this video and, and I get it. Like whenever I see anybody, whenever I see anybody going against James Charles, there's like this fear. Fear. There's this fear that the sisters are gonna go crazy on them, right? Like the sisters are not above making death threats and going crazy. So I understand Tati Westbrook's fear in that, but I think it's a powerful message for anybody out there, whether you're struggling with just like regular fear or like true anxiety. You know what I mean? Like, be true to you, do what you think is right, move forward, work hard, and just realize it's going to be work worth it. Every single challenge that we go through, every single time that we overcome fear, in my opinion, it, it builds this resilience in us, all right? Like, I am not a neuroscientist, but there are studies that prove like this is why exposure therapy works. When we continue to face our fears, our amygdala starts to chill the hell out and we stop being as afraid the next time we go into that situation. All right, so a few morals of this video and this whole situation that's going down. One is don't be a dick. If somebody has helped you out along the way, like respect them and chill out and don't let your ego lose control, all right? Everybody needs mentors and we need to respect our mentors. We need to respect the people who have been through what we've been through, right? I'm not here to say that every person older than you who has walked a certain path knows everything and is never wrong, but we need to respect their experience. But the other thing on this is let go, move forward, all right? Because resentment, holding on to resentment, they say is like drinking poison and hoping the other person dies. So we gotta let go of this stuff. And I always say this, forgiveness isn't about letting the other person off the hook. Forgiveness is about letting ourselves off the hook. All right, but anyways, that's all I got for this video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell because I make a ton of videos turning the mess into a message. And a huge thank you to everybody supporting the channel over on Patreon. You are all amazing. And if you would like to become a patron, you can click or tap right there, all right? Thanks again so, so much for watching. I'll see you next time.